Thank you very much, uh, Paul, and thank for the construction industry for inviting me here today. Um, can everybody hear me? There's a lot of background din there, but um, I just want to talk a wee bit about uh, how Dublin City is planning for the future. We're uh, two-thirds of the way through the new city development plan for 2016 to 2022 now, a six-year plan. The first stage consultation has just completed, um, and the second stage consultation will be going out on the 21st of June. So all of you who are interested in making some comments on, any, on the amendments to the development plan, keep an eye out for the four weeks from the 21st of, the first of June. So every development plan and the city development plan has a core strategy. The core strategy for the city, um, if I can show it to you there, where uh, we have the, the, uh, M, the M50 around here, we have the city centre here. Can everybody hear me still? Yeah? Around the city centre, the core strategy is to extend the city centre east and west towards the Docklands, towards Fibsburg, Grange, Gorman, the new DIT campus, towards Houston, St James. You probably had a, a, a presentation this morning on the, on the new children's hospital. and the digital hub area. So those are the key areas around the city centre. The next tranche of, uh, of development areas for the core strategy are just inside the M50. We have Clongriffin, Belmain, the North Fringe, uh, Ballymun, uh, Ashton, Pellistown, which is nearing completion, um, uh, the Park West, Cherry Orchard area, Nace Road area. Um, the other aspect of the core strategy is the connectivity. There are trans this is the most connected part of the state. Major transport proposals, including the Lewis connection across the city now. Um, so you can see there, if all of the, the key developing areas are linked by good public transport, or will be in the future. The other key aspect of the core strategy for the city development plan um, are, the, are the green corridors. Uh, if we're promoting quality density in the city, um, we need to co uh, complement that by green space, green corridors and sustainable uh, green infrastructure. So in essence, the uh, core strategy is, you can see there, for a compact connected city to promote employment and innovation in the city and quality neighbourhood making. Just a wee bit of background to the development plan. Um, uh, the population back in 2006 was 506,000. Uh, 2011, it was 526,000. And the target for the development plan is that by the end of the development plan period, um, we should, we're aiming to have around 600,000 uh, uh, residents in the city. Uh, that's ambitious. Um, uh, the, the other criteria, the other, uh, matters to be looked at is that household size is decreasing in the city from 2.4 and likely to end up at 1.9 by 2000, the early uh, uh, 2020. Residential completions at the bottom there ha has uh, been ca a catastrophic decline from 7,000 per annum back in 2006 to 500 in 2011, increasing up towards 1,000 per annum at the moment, but still well short of the 4,200 that's needed per annum uh, to, to achieve the core strategy. Another, uh, just a bit of background to making the development plan, is that the uh, tenureship of housing is changed. Not only are households getting smaller, but the percentage, say, of private rental has increased from 19% back in 2006. Oops, oh, sorry. Sorry, I need to go. Uh, 19,000. Oh, sorry again. Nineteen percent back then, up to thirty-two percent. So you can see the type of tenureship in the in the city is changing, and we need to plan for that. Other key uh, matters to be con to concern us is that the household size, um, uh, one or two-person households, constitute fifty-seven percent of the households in the city. So the notion that the, uh, going forward that the city is going to be uh, three bed semis is uh, not founded in, in our research. There are only 440 hectares of land left in the city. We have to husband and manage that carefully. Uh, two examples there. If 
those 440 acres are uh, uh, at a relatively high density of 120 units per hectare, we can accommodate 50,000 units in the, in, in the city. But however, if we decrease that to 60 units per hectare, we have only space left for 26,000 units, i.e. not even enough for the next six years. Another important fact is that 76% of the housing output um, at the moment is in the form of apartments in the city. So turning now to the uh, importance of quality housing. The objectives in the City Development Plan for the next six years is to increase the supply of quality homes which meet people's needs. I have to stress that again. To provide homes with long life, adaptable through the life stages of people, with quality internal and external space. So it goes back to that point to make, we need to diversify the type of housing and apartments that are provided. Essentially housing for different population groups. We need to cater for student accommodation, for example. There are 80,000 students uh, in the city at the moment. If we can provide purpose -built, more purpose-built student accommodation um, for those groups, it frees up rent, the rent, rented areas for, uh, for, uh, 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 for other, uh, other cohorts of the population. We need to look at refurbishment of vacant upper floors in the city. We, we calculate that there are probably 3,000 units worth of, of upper floors in places like Capel Street, Thomas Street, Anger Street, um, which could accommodate uh, 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 um, extra population. There, was a, there is a Living City initiative with tax incentives in operation since May last, last year. However, as you may have seen in the paper yesterday, the uptake is very poor, and I believe Minister Noonan is uh, looking at uh, reviewing uh, that, that uh, uh, tax incentive. We need to cater for older people. As we go forward, older people make up a higher and higher percentage of the population. We're not looking at nursing homes, but at uh, assisted living, probably with concierge uh, uh, for, for people as they grow older. We're looking at managed private rental accommodation. These, this is accommodation provided in the long term by uh, professional companies um, who are looking for a steady income uh, rather than what we may be used, for, used to in Ireland. We need to diversify to use uh, to approved housing bodies rather than just the City Council, therefore stere uh, creating a stereotype of the type of housing that's provided for public housing. Dublin City has been involved with, the, with other local authorities in the region uh, as part of the Housing Task Force. Um, part of the research over the last year demonst demonstrates that there are of the total permissions granted, say, uh, uh, line two there for the City Council, there are about 5,000 units worth of permission granted, uh, waiting to be developed. Um, so I would implore anybody who's in the development industry to look at their portfolio of, of uh, uh, lands that have got planned permission, uh, come to us and talk about how they can uh, release those lands or bring, or bring them forward to ease the, the, the housing supply crisis. Of course, to make a sustainable city, we need uh, uh, an economy that is, supports the regional, the country, and is of an inter international importance. There are 350,000 people employed the city, in the city. Again, employment needs to be diversified uh, from, from just thinking of pure office development. Student accommodation um, is part of the economy. Uh, there are 3,500 bed spaces under construction. Uh, even the nightlife, the cafe, the food sector is an important part of the hospitality sector and the tourism sector. Craft distilleries, visitor centres are growing. For instance, the Tailings in Newmarket, um, we would hope, will uh, give life to that part of town. Cruise tourism is growing, um, uh, as is uh, the amount of permissions granted for uh, hotel bedrooms uh, in the city. 2,400 in the pipeline at the moment. I know that uh, there's a, 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 a backlog in the amount of uh, hotels being provided, but there's a concern that we would have that by the year 2020 we may have an oversupply of, hotel, of hotels. Um, uh, however, at the moment there is an undersupply because of the lag in construction.
The other point about making a sustainable city as we go forward is to integrate uh, movement and transport uh, uh, into the city. We're working with the National Transport Authority to improve the environment for pedestrians and cyclists. You can see an example of that will be in College Green, which is uh, uh, part of the uh, development plan future for the city. The Lewis Cross City is, be, uh, is being constructed at the moment. The Phoenix Park Tunnel is opening soon. Um, and uh, there is also a policy to look at uh, a more flexible approach to parking. So to where you have park uh, apartments close to good public transport, um, you can have reduced car parking needs. With regard to the structure of our city going forward, there's a lot of debate in the development plan um, uh, uh, and with our councillors about the height of buildings in the city. Low rise um, in the current development plan is defined as a height up to 28 metres, which is seven storey commercial, or tw and has been amended by our councillors to 24 metre residential. Outside the canals, though, it is up to 16 metres, which is only four storey. Um, many people will comment that, that four-storey as a general low-rise height in the majority of the city is rather too low. Um, for instance, if you place it like Rath Mines, the swimming pool site there, would not be allowed now under that policy. To achieve sustainable densities in the city, we need to be providing 60 units per hectare to support the variety of, of social uh, and physical infrastructures need, e.g. buses, corner shops, schools, etc. And that's what the policies and the development plan seek to achieve. Uh, just as a, by, uh, a part of the development plan, we have done, carried out a survey of the vacant lands in the city. There are 65 hectares of vacant land in the inner city between the canals. Um, we need to bring forward policies, and we are bringing forward policies, complemented by the vacant land, uh, vacant sites levy, uh, to expedite the release of those lands for much needed housing. This slide simply shows the strategic development areas. Do you remember the first slide we showed the core strategy? If you translate these into the SDRAs, there are 17 of them in the city. You can see them, they roughly, the roughly follow uh, slide one. Uh, so they were areas like North Fringe, uh, Ballymun, um, Pellistown, the Docklands area here, and the area around uh, the Digital Hub and uh, St. James Hospital and also Cherry Orchard. So these are our major growth areas for the future. For each of those, we have a set of key principles to guide the developers in the future. Just go through an example, a couple of examples of those S STRAs. Um, the first one would be Grange Gorman, um, which is uh, yeah, Grange Gorman. It's a, it's a, a 30 hectare area. Um, there's a new campus being provided there at the moment in accordance with the strategic development zone um, for, to provide for 20,000 students over the next uh, few years. Um, the final employment on that site will be uh, 8,000. 8, 8, 8, so th that campus is, in, uh, is integrated into the rest of the city. You can, you can see it provides, there's the campus, it has open space, there are links back to the city. I talked about the Lewis line and connectivity. Here's the new Lewis Cross City here that goes out to Broome Bridge. It will go across the face of Broadstone and service the campus as well, integrating back down into the city at, uh, in, the, in, in the medium term. Another example would be the Grand Canal Dock STZ, which was approved a couple of years ago. It's a 66 hectare area. Uh, and uh, it's well underway at the moment. Uh, the plan uh, was for 2,600 uh, residential units and uh, 360,000 square metres of uh, uh, commercial development and 13,000 square metres of new parks. The, the eventual population there will be 5,800, not 58,000 as, as there, and 23,000 employees. The way that the SDZ for the Docklands is set up is that, is that city blocks have been set out which give certainty to developers and certainty to local residents communities as to what is expected by way of mix in each of the 20 city blocks. So they will vary between 30 and 70 percent residential um, and commercial uh, and, and open space. Uh, to, to date, over 80% of the uh, sites of the city blocks have been subject of either pre-application discussions or actual planning permissions. One example would be uh, 
sorry, I've... Sorry. One example would be Boland's Mills, which is granted permission recently, and the mills are being demolished at the moment. That will provide uh, for both residential and uh, commercial uh, 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 occupation, and will be, will be a flagship for uh, the, the, the uh, SDZ. With regard to the North Fringe, sorry, I've jumped again. With regard to the North Fringe, um, we have re reviewed um, uh, the, de the po density policy there and actually reduced the density in order to bring forward development. When the uh, local plan was produced uh, f a few years ago, um, the, the density was eight, about 60, 70, 80. We've reduced that now to a range of 50, 60, 70 in order to kickstart development. But as as uh, things pick up, the density will increase again and, and retain the area as being viable. You can see uh, the importance there again, how you translate from the core strategy down to, uh, down to local level, where you have the green space, uh, the Father Collins Park, the green linkages um, uh, there and there, the train station. So all of the elements that are in the core strategy cadence uh, uh, move down and, and are applied in each of the, uh, of the developing areas. The other SDZ that, is, that has recently been uh, approved uh, by the Minister is that of Poolbeg West. Uh, you can see it here. It's, uh, those of you know, there's the old glass bottle site here and the port lands here. Um, so this area here, um, uh, we have now a responsibility over the next few months to prepare a new uh, planning scheme for that area, again applying the principles that I've enunciated to you, um, to bring uh, uh, up to 3,000 residential units, much needed residential units, into, that, into that, those 34 hectares. Just a, a, com a comment on development management. The other a key aspect of our uh, uh, function in the City Council, um, we, the way to implement the development plan and the SDZs and the LEPs is through development management. We deal with um, uh, commercial and residential applications. But, uh, commercial applications have increased a lot in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, residential still uh, have to pick up a, li a little bit. There, I must stress uh, the importance of pre-application consultation. Part of our active land management policy is to, if any developer or any applicant wants a meeting with us, we'll facilitate that meeting within 10 days to, bring forward, to, bring, to help bring forward a viable uh, planning application. Further information requests are often a bane in the life of, of, of those in the development industry. Um, you must realise we do that rather than refuse an application outright, and we will try uh, 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 as much as possible to reduce uh, the request in a further information document. And compliances, which are the conditions attached to an application, we now have, a, have, a, have an objective to deal with those within two months. So just some conclusions, just to let, remind you, the new draft development plan is in a second public display from the 21st of June for four weeks. So if you need to make, or if you feel you need to make comments on do so, this is your opportunity. There are sufficient zoned and serviced land for much needed housing, employment and amenity needs in the city. We need to respond to the change in demographics in the city, as I've, as I've described to you, and that involves fine-tuning our policies and our responses and our applications that, that are brought in. We must make the best use of our urban land in the interest of sustainability, in the interest of climate change, and avoid urban sprawl beyond the M50. To achieve all of that, we must all, both the City Council, all other stakeholders, and you in the development industry, involve ourselves in what would be called active land management. Thanks very much. That's it.